Simply put, a waveform monitor gives you a consistent way to judge the luma levels of your footage. The measurement will change depending on whether you're working with an NTSC or a PAL project. But as you're about to see, there's really not much difference between the two. An NTSC project uses an IRE scale, where zero represents pure black and 100 represents pure white for most digital video systems. A PAL project works exactly the same way, except black is represented by 0.3 volts and white is represented by 1 volt. Once you understand this correlation, everything else works the same. Greg is going to show you the waveform in action to give you a better idea of what these technical definitions actually mean. Okay, so we're in Premiere Pro and I've got a waveform monitor up and I just wanted to show you how I brought that up and a couple things that I changed. So number one, if you go to window and you go to reference monitor, that's how you can go ahead and bring that up. And then by default, usually setup and chroma are checked and I like to uncheck those. So unless you're working with analog video, you don't need that. And the chroma really is not something that I use functionally, at least not for color correction. Um, this intensity will control how intense the basic plot of the YC waveform is. You know, so if I turn this down, it'll, it'll be less intense, but it doesn't have anything to do with your actual footage. So it really just has to do with how bright the display is. So looking at this, zero is black and anything that falls below this zero line is gonna be basically represented as pure black without any detail. 100 is white and when you export, basically anything over that 100 is gonna be represented as pure white. Now, you might have some footage that actually will shoot up to this 110 mark or maybe even higher. Um, so if you put that footage in, you'll see it come above the white, uh, come above the waveform, but you want to make sure you bring it down below that 100 in order to make sure you're not losing any detail on export. So like the Panasonic GH4 is one camera that definitely shoots what they call super white. So you definitely want to make sure you're pulling those back down into the 100 range to make sure you're not going to lose that detail that your camera is actually capturing, but might not be viewable on playback. Okay. So rather than showing you a shot, which we'll get to, I'm going to start with a ramp. And this is going to hopefully teach us, we're going to look at a series of ramps actually, and this is hopefully going to teach us what you're seeing and what you're not seeing. So from left to right, this is where your points on the waveform get plotted. In other words, this left vertical line right here is basically being plotted right here along this left you know, vertical line on the waveform. This middle gray here is going to be right here, and the far right's right here, and so on. So the reason this is just a dot, uh, a perfect line, is because in these vertical bands, at least for this um, ramp, this is basically a pure white line. And so even though there's a lot of pixels here, they're all white. So it just falls as one dot at 100 because it's pure white. Same thing goes for the right hand side. It's pure black and it's all pure black. Same thing goes for the middle. It's basically middle gray. So it falls right here around this 50 mark and it's just one dot because there's no variance on the vertical band. There's no variance in that you know, vertical line of intensity of luminance of luma. Um, so moving left to right, it basically starts at pure white and works its way all the way down the luminance to black with varying shades of gray in between. Now, it is representing left to right. So if I flip this, you can see that now, because it's black on the left, it's now the left-hand side is represented by the zero. It scales up the luma until we get to pure white. So flipping it back and forth, you can see that left to right definitely has a huge effect on this because it's black on the left and white on the right now. Now, even though the middle stays the same because that's where middle gray is. So let's move on to a different type of ramp or uh, gradient to show you the difference here. Same idea where we have a white to black gradient, but considerably different result on the waveform monitor. Now, from left to right, it's still plotting each vertical line. But now, if we were to move and kind of look at this vertical line, we basically have black. And then moving up, we go all the way up to white. And we've got basically all the shades in between. So this black pixel here is represented with this little tiny green dot. This white pixel here is represented by this little tiny, tiny green dot. And then moving up 
into these midtones and then further up to the highlights, you've basically almost got the entire black to white spectrum here of Luma going up and being represented. And then left to right, really each vertical line here is exactly the same. There's no difference. It's always black to white, black to white, no matter where you're at. So it looks like this big green sort of wall. Now, if I were to flip this version, let me highlight it and flip it, nothing happens. And that's just to show you that even though now the black, which is zero, is at the top, it's still just plotting the luminance of each pixel. So even though this white pixel is at the bottom, it plots it here at the top because it's white, it's bright. Even though this black one is now at the top, it's still represented here. So nothing changes by flipping this one. All right, let's take a look at another example. All right, so here's a circle ramp. Now we've got this black all the way to white, dead center, and you can see dead center in our waveform. We've got black, which is zero, moving all the way up with all the shades in between to white. Now on the left-hand side, this vertical band is mostly pure white. Now there might be a little fade here to a darker or a lighter gray, and same thing goes on the right-hand side. So you can see there's just a small smattering of representation here that this is mostly white in this vertical band. And then moving you know, left to right, it goes from white all the way to pure black. So it's basically white and it works its way down with all the shades in between to, till it gets to pure black. Now, again, if I flip this one, nothing happens because even though the vertical position is changing, the amount of dark and bright pixels is not actually changing. So even though now the black is at the bottom, it's still represented right here. And even when I flip it, this black pixel is still represented right here because it's a luminance or a luma, I should say, um, representation. All right, one more for good measure. All right, now we've got our white to black ramp. And so in the middle here, we've got white and it goes all the way down to black and that's represented. We've got our pure white here and every shade in between going down to black. And then on the left-hand side, it's mostly solid black, but there's a little bit of dark gray in here. So that's got a little chunk of pixels there. And then moving left to right, it gets darker to, you know, down here, darker to pure white. So darker to pure white in the middle. And then again, flipping this one will do absolutely nothing because the vertical line is the same. Whether the white and black are on the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter to the, to the waveform monitor. Okay, so now let's take a look at a shot and see if we can make heads or tails of it. So this is an uncorrected shot. Uh, it's a C100 shot, shot on a cinema mode. So it's, it's relatively flat. And I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. So this is black. This is pure white. And now as a general rule, you kind of want something to be, you know, in your in your highlight area up near 100 and you want some shadows to be near the zero. Now, of course, there's exceptions to this. You may have a shot that doesn't really have any shadow in it, in which case you might not have anything down there. But in this case, we've got some of these dark shadows and these dark poles and then we've got these bright highlights. So really this should be, you know, hitting zero, at least touching it and 100. So what we're looking at though is left to right, again, a representation of the vertical pixel brightness. So let's take a look right here at this section. We've got this bright little leaf here and that's gonna be represented right here. That's that brightest section right there. And the only reason it's not hitting 100 is because we shot this very flat. Same thing goes for here. This little bright spot's probably this guy. You know, this one toward the middle is probably here or here. And then we've got our shadows. So this black pole and maybe this, you know, darker section of trees, that's gonna be all of this section right here. So, and then in between is our mid-tones. So kind of these medium, they're not too bright, not too dark areas. So the idea with color correction is going to be to use this scope to maximize your contrast uh, ratio or to at least get it to where you want it to be, not necessarily to maximize it, but to get it to where you want it to be and to not be dipping too low to where you're losing details. So you're not going to want to drop it below zero unless you want a specific area to be solid black with no detail. Same goes for the 100 mark. You can push it up and touch 100, but as soon as you push it over, anything you push over is going to be pure white. So unless you're prepared to lose that detail, you should keep it under 100. So let's take a look at this shot corrected. 
There we go. And so what I've done here in this shot is I've pushed up the whites close to 100. I've dropped the shadows down near zero. Even some of them are touching it a little bit. And then what I also did was boosted up the midtones, and that creates some nice contrast so that we've got a nice brightness to darkness ratio. And I mean, just looking at the difference between the two shots here, you know, it's quite a dramatic difference. So the contrast ratio is a lot higher in this one. So there's a lot of much bigger difference between this brightest area and this darkest area. Um, and we're basically using our waveform to help us make sure we're not blowing anything out that doesn't need to be blown out and we're not losing any detail while we're not prepared to lose it. So um, hopefully that teaches you how to use this waveform monitor and you know just what it shows you. So we're going to learn how to use it interactively with color correction, but in this case we just want to introduce you to it and make sure you know what the numbers mean and um, sort of how to uh, interpret the shot that you're looking at on the waveform monitor.